How you doing? Hope you're having a good day. Today I'll be describing the difference between Raman and fluorescence in terms of the density matrix and Feynman diagrams. So typically when people speak of Raman spectroscopy, they say, oh, we have two states. The ground state, which let's call state one, and a vibrationally excited state, state two. And there's some state up here, an electronically excited state. Let's call that state one prime. And they say, oh, you have some incoming light of let's say omega one, and that excites from your ground state to your electronically excited state. And in fluorescence, for example, uh, well, in both really, um, spontaneous emission occurs from this electronically excited state, electronically just depending on whether you're talking about fluorescence or Raman, or substitute virtual in the place of if you're speaking about Raman. But then you come down from this high excited state. Let's just call it the high excited state. You come down from this high excited state back down to the vibrationally excited state in the ground electronic state, state 2. Uh, let's call that omega 2. So in fluorescence, we would call omega-1 the, in fluorescence, we would call omega-1 the, well, in both, you call it the incoming light. But omega-2, whereas in fluorescence, it's the fluoresced frequency, in Raman, it's the scattered frequency. And in both of them, at least in spontaneous Raman, omega-2 is going to come out in a random direction. So there's no angular dependence on omega-2. You're going to get equal omega-2 photons in all directions of space. So that's how people usually discuss Raman and fluorescence, and it's usually sort of confusing, like, oh, well, I mean, those pretty much seem like the exact same thing. Um, I mean, so I wrote the kets here, but usually when they describe them, they don't write the kets. Let's erase those for now. So that's how both Raman and fluorescence are described, by this right here. Now, I'm going to describe the difference in terms of density matrix theory and Feynman diagrams. So first, we'll talk about Raman. So in Raman, instead of describing two interactions like we do here, we're going to describe four instead. So let's draw three different states just like we did up there. Let's draw state one, which is the very lowest lying state. State two, which is slightly above state one. And this state way up here which again we'll call one prime. So in Raman, the first interaction we're going to have is with omega one. In s sorts of types of Raman, you might call omega one the pump. The next interaction that's going to happen, oh, and in Raman, uh, one prime is also called the virtual state. Okay, I also should not be labeling these as kets. You know, instead of that, I'm going to label them like this. I'm just going to put the bra side of it. So that they're actual states and they're not coherences. Okay, so now the second interaction is going to be down from the virtual state, you may say at a frequency omega-2. And then there's another f interaction with omega-1, but it's the complex conjugate of omega-1 we're interacting with. So we'll call that omega-1 star. And the last interaction is the frequency 
we actually detect, and that again is going to be equal to omega 2, so we'll call that omega 2 star. And depending on whether you're doing stimulated or spontaneous ramen, omega 1 would be called your pump, omega 2 would be called your probe. So essentially you would be, in stimulated ramen, you'd be losing a pump photon, whereas you'd be gaining a probe photon. And in this sense, I'm speaking of one photon consists of two of these arrows. Okay, and then in a Feynman diagram, how would we describe that? In a double-sided Feynman diagram. So we have our two uh, time evolution lines, and we're starting in state one. So this side represents the ket. This side represents the bra. So we're starting in state one. First thing that's going to happen, interaction with omega one. And then we're now in one on the ket side. We're in one prime on the bra side. Next interaction, omega-2 going out. So omega-2 here going out. Now we're in 2, 1 prime. Yes. 2, 1 prime. Next interaction, omega-1 star and the complex conjugate part is happening on this line. So omega-1 star is coming in. So omega-1 star here. Okay, and now this... Okay, this is not a 1 prime. This is just a 1. I don't know why I wrote 1 prime there. This would be 1 prime here. Okay, that's right. Sorry about that. Hopefully you're still following me. Okay. After this omega-1 star, now this side's in 1 prime. This side's in state 2. And finally, the last interaction is omega-2 star. I uh, didn't leave myself enough room. Omega-2 star is going out. And you end up in state... Two, two. Okay, so that's the process of ramen. Now on the next page, we're going to do fluorescence, and we're going to flip back and forth between the pages to compare them. Okay, so fluorescence here. You finally learn how to spell fluorescence after you've spelled it a million times and got it wrong. Okay, so let's draw the three states again. This is state one, this is state two, just a little bit above, and way up here, we're calling this one prime. And now in fluorescence, this is your first electronically excited state. And this is your electronic ground state. State two is a vibrationally excited state. Okay, so you got omega one coming in. That's the first interaction. Now, here's a difference between fluorescence and Raman. Next interaction is omega-1 again, but this time omega-1 star. Omega-1 star. So now we're actually populating this state 1 prime instead of just having a coherence. And then what we have is omega-2 and omega-2 star. So notice, we never have a coherence between state 1 and 2, which are the vibrational states. Uh, we'll compare all the differences at the very end, though. So, Feynman diagram now. Let's make sure we make it longer so we can fit all this. State 1 here. State 1. State 1, that's where we're starting. Okay, first interaction. Omega 1, the real part of it's coming in. 
and we're in okay the, now this is one prime over here we're still in one now I'm just drawing the state here again to make it clear we're still in this state because here is your density matrix at this time point okay next interaction omega 1 star so here we go boom omega 1 star now this is one prime here and this is one prime now we're populating one prime next interaction omega 2 is going out on this side omega 2 now this is 2 this is still one prime next interaction and final one omega 2 star over here and we end up pop we end up populating state 2 state 2 okay so what I'm gonna do now to co easily compare the differences is draw out the density matrix and show as time passed we went from this density matrix to this density matrix so in Raman we started in 1 1 then we had omega 1 interaction which brought the ket over here to 1 prime next we had omega 2 interaction which brought this to state 2 next we had another omega 1 which brought this to 1 prime and finally we had 2 2 in fluorescence we had we started in 1 1 and then omega 1 came in this changed to 1 prime next thing that happened is the bra changed to 1 prime next thing that happened is this changed to 2 last thing we ended up in 2 2 okay so just from this little section you should note all the differences Really, there's only one difference that I can see right now, and that's in this density matrix part. So in Raman, we created a coherence between the vibrational states 1 and 2. In fluorescence, we did not create a coherence at all. We created an electronic coherence, if that's a thing. I've never heard of that, though. But it might be a thing, even though I've never heard of it. So, fluorescence. We actually populated the electronically excited state. In Raman, we did not actually populate that state. So that's why in Raman, this one prime state is sometimes called the virtual state. It's because it's never populated. In fluorescence, it's an actual state, and it's actually populated. And in fluorescence, there is not a vibrational coherence that's created. So those are really the only differences I wanted to point out. I hope that helps you understand the difference between Raman and fluorescence. And I hope that gives you some insight. Thanks for watching and have a great day.